Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to be looking at the rotary vane pump. We'll look at all of its main components, how it works, some of its design features, and the advantages and disadvantages associated with this type of pump. So here is a rotary vane pump. This particular pump is quite small. It looks like it would connect to a 220 volt supply. It's used for aeration, so it's going to be pumping air, but we can also use vane pumps in hydraulic systems and also for creating a vacuum within a system. Let's load up the labels and we can have a look at some of the components. So we have our motor, that is this section here. We have our shroud, we have an end plate, this item here. We've got an inlet and a outlet end cap. This is the inlet cap and the outlet in the background. We've got a muffler box. That is this whole piece around here. We've got an external filter which we use to draw air into the pump. And over the back, we've actually got the main discharge and that would be through this pipe here. The gasket is a static type seal, which has been installed between the muffler, box and the end plate. If we take a cross section, then we can have a look at some of the internal components as well. So we can see some of the internal components. I'm just going to get rid of the amber gasket. We've got a rotor. That is this round item here. We've got the vanes. There's four of them. There's one here, one here, another one here, and one there. And then we have a cam ring, which some people also call a stator. And that is this entire piece around the outside here. The stator in this pump is stationary, whilst the rotor rotates. Now we've learned the names of some of the components, let's see if we can figure out how it works. You can see we've got our external filter. That's where we're going to draw air into the pump. Because this type of pump is very sensitive to foreign particles and abrasion, we're actually going to have an additional filter inside the muffler box. We can see the air flows in through the filter here, is discharged through the base of the filter, and then passes through a secondary filter here in order to reach the suction port of the pump. We take away the end plate, we should be able to see the suction port underneath. So the air is passed through the external filter, now the internal filter, and it will be discharged in this space here, which is the suction port of the pump. If we take a cross section, we'll be able to get a much better view of what's happening inside the pump. And I think this time we can actually take away some of the labels, which we no longer need. When the air or fluid, in our example we're using air, but it can be another fluid. These pumps are often used for hydraulic fluids as well. If we back it up, we can watch what happens as the fluid flows in. It will say the air comes in here and it's going to fill up the entire space between one vein and the other vein. As the rotor rotates, we're going to seal off the space between the two veins. And then as the rotor continues to rotate, the veins are going to turn and we're going to open up the discharge port. Notice now that discharge port is open and we're going to displace or force out all of that fluid, all of that air into the discharge port. The reason this occurs is because gradually the space, the volumetric space in this area is decreasing, whereas on the opposite side, on the suction side, the volumetric space was increasing. So let's just play that through. We're discharging the air. It's completely discharged. We'll go around here and then we're going to be sucking air back in on this side, completely fill this chamber, force the air around, this may also be a fluid, remember, maybe a hydraulic fluid, etc. 
and then begin to discharge the fluid on the opposite side. And in this manner, we can create flow. And that's exactly what pumps do. This particular type of pump is a positive displacement pump. That means it can pump air, whereas a centrifugal pump, for example, cannot. Notice that the vanes on our particular pump are simply sliding in and out of the rotor due to centrifugal force. It is, however, possible to use hydraulic pressure to force the vanes outwards against the cam ring or to use springs. Notice that the rotor is offset compared to the position of the cam ring. It's slightly elevated above the center line of the cam ring. If the rotor is offset, it means that we can draw a fluid in here and discharge it on the opposite side because there's a changing volumetric space from one side to the other. If we were to push the rotor onto the center line of the cam ring, then there would be no flow because the volumetric space around the entire rotor and the cam ring would remain constant. So there'd be no reason to get flow. Now this particular type of vane pump is known as an unbalanced fixed displacement pump. It's unbalanced because the rotor is offset. That means that there are additional loads transferred to the pump shaft. For this reason, the pump's known as unbalanced. It's also possible to have a balanced vane pump where the rotor sits in the middle of two eccentric cam rings. There'll be two inlets and two discharges. For example, an inlet here and then a discharge and then a discharge and an inlet. Because the rotor sits in the middle of two eccentric cam rings, and because there are two inlets and two outlets, we have a balanced rotary vane pump. So just remember that if the rotor sits offset to the cam ring, and there is one inlet and one outlet, then it's an unbalanced pump. If the rotor sits in the middle of two eccentric cam rings, and there are two inlets and two outlets, then it's a balanced rotary vane pump. We can see on our pump that the cam ring does not move in relation to the rotor. That means that if the speed of the pump remains constant, so does the flow rate. This is a fixed delivery pump. We're always going to be displacing the same amount of fluid for every rotation that we make. There is however a slightly different design that you may see. And this design is called variable displacement or variable delivery. We can vary the delivery rate of the pump by varying the position of the cam ring with respect to the rotor. If we were to move the cam ring upwards, then we would decrease the delivery rate of the pump. Remember that if the rotor sits directly in the middle of the cam ring, we get no flow. And by pushing the cam ring upwards, we're going to position the rotor more in the center of the cam ring. That means that as the cam ring is moved upwards, the flow rate will gradually decrease until the rotor is perfectly in the middle of the cam ring and then there will be no flow whatsoever. But how do we force the cam ring upwards? Well, we can do that by connecting a hydraulic piston onto the discharge side of the pump. The connection will come around and we'll have a piston on the lower side and if the discharge pressure increases too much, then the piston will push the cam ring upwards, the rotor will move more into the center of the cam ring and the flow rate will decrease. When the discharge pressure reduces again, the piston will move downwards and the cam ring will move back to its original position because on the opposite side, on this side here, there will be a spring. So it's the hydraulic piston, which is controlled by the discharge pressure of the pump which forces the cam ring upwards, which puts the rotor more into the center of the cam ring, which in turn reduces the flow rate through the pump. As the pressure on the discharge side decreases, the spring pressure on the top of the cam ring will push the cam ring downwards because it can overcome the hydraulic pressure in the piston. And in this way, we can vary the delivery rate of the pump. So two different designs, the fixed delivery rate pump, like the one we see here, where the cam ring is stationary in relation to the rotor, 
and the variable delivery design where we use a hydraulic piston to adjust the position of the cam ring in relation to the rotor and then we'll use a spring to return the cam ring to its original position once the hydraulic pressure decreases. As with all pumps, there are advantages and disadvantages, and the rotary vane pump is no exception. The rotary vane pump is a type of positive displacement pump. They're self-priming, have very low pressure pulsations, and they're efficient. They're also suitable for a wide range of pressures and temperatures. In addition to that, rotary vein pumps are also quiet compared to other types of pump. There are however some disadvantages. The pump itself has quite a complex design compared to other pumps. And because of the tight seals between the veins and the cam ring, the pump is very sensitive to foreign particle ingress. For this reason, additional filters are required on the suction side to remove any fine particles that may damage the internals of the pump. This type of pump is also not suitable for pumping abrasive liquids. So you now know all of the main components associated with a rotary vane pump. You know how it works. You know some of the main designs such as unbalanced and balanced and fixed delivery rate and variable delivery rate. And you also know some of the advantages and disadvantages associated with this type of pump. If you want to learn more about rotary vane pumps or other engineering related topics, then check out some of our engineering video courses. Our video courses cover everything from combustion engines to valves to pumps to power stations. And if you check the video description area, you'll find a special discount coupon that you can use with any purchases you make. If you like this video, then please do share it or like it on social media. It really does help us out and allows us to produce more and more content. Thanks very much for your time.